Hello everyone. In this video, I want to show you how you can do a data wide to long transformation in the M plus software. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials related to structural equation modeling, Leben class analysis, multi-level analysis, and other multivariate methods. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, if you like this video, then please don't forget to hit the like button. In this video, I want to show you how you can transform a data set from a wide format to a long format. Why could that be of interest? For example, when you have longitudinal data that you want to analyze, so repeated measures data that you would like to analyze with multi-level or hierarchical linear modeling in the M plus software. And Let's say your data set comes in a wide format, such as the example data set that you can see here, then you might be interested in transforming it into long format so that you can conveniently analyze it with multi-level analysis. Here you can see an example where I have four variables, four columns in a data set, and those four columns could represent repeated measures of the same outcome variable, where I would like to, for example, analyze changes over time using a growth curve model or fitting some other kind of longitudinal model within the multi-level modeling framework. And so if I wanted to apply a multi-level model to longitudinal data, then I would have to have the data in long format rather than wide format. And so I want to show you how you can very easily transform this data set from this long, from this wide format, excuse me, to a long format where all the values for the outcome variable are in a single column and you have a person ID variable that indicates the observations or individuals and where you can also add a time variable to your data set such that you can then use, for example, a growth curve model in the multi-level modeling framework to analyze these data. So let's go to M plus and I'll show you how this wide to long data transformation works in the M plus software. So you can see here that um, I indicated in the data command my wide format data set that I would like to use and that I would like to transform. And so then in the same data command, I added the data wide to long subcommand. This data wide to long subcommand allows me to define which variables come in wide format and are supposed to be combined into one variable so that they can be transformed to a long form. And you can see here in this case it's very simple because I have only one repeated variable y1 through y4. So those are the repeated measurements on my outcome variable. For example, it might be a repeatedly observed life satisfaction score or repeatedly observed intelligence test score or something like that that I measured on four time points. And so now I want to stack these four columns on top of one another so that I get a single um, column for this variable. So therefore, I use this statement wide equals here to indicate which variables are to be combined into one. And so those are those four columns, y1 through y4. And then how does M plus know that these are y1 through y4 and where they are? It knows it from the variable command that comes later where you list the names. Otherwise, M plus wouldn't know what y1 through y4, uh, what that means. And so here they are defined as the names in the wide format data set that is used here as the input. And so therefore, M plus can then see, ah, okay, those are the variables. They are here. Everything is fine. And so then I use the long statement here to indicate that a new variable is to be created in this long format version of the data set that combines those four variables into one. And that's all you need, so to say, in order to get that transformed. Furthermore, we are defining a, an ID variable here. The person um, is the... Um, level two unit here, so to say. We have longitudinal data, so we have repeated observations nested within persons. And so the person variable is needed when you want to use these data in a multi-level model to indicate what 
um, the level two units are versus the level one units. So this serves later as our cluster variable to indicate the multi-level structure where observations are nested within persons, or you could say where time points are nested within persons. So this ID variable is then created by M plus and uh, has the name person so that we can then refer to it later in our multi-level analysis as the cluster variable. Also a repetition, the repetition subcommand here can be used to generate a time variable. And so this is simply a variable that enumerates those four measurement occasions for each person. So then it runs from one to four um, within each person to indicate what time point we have for each person. For example, the Y1 score for each person would be uh, um, would get the value of 1 on the time variable, y2 would get the value of 2, y3 would get the value of 3, and so on. And I'll show you this later when we look at the long format data set that M plus generates here. So those are the steps that you need to take in the data y to long command if you want to um, analyze longitudinal data in long format and transfer it from wide format to long format. You need um, to stack the values into one variable, you need to have a person ID variable as a cluster variable, and you need a time variable so that you can later on use time as a predictor in your model, for example, when you specify a latent or a growth curve model in uh, for these data. Then in the variable command, notice that the names are for the wide format data set. So those are the names defined for the original data set that comes in wide format. However, then in the use variables command, we use the newly created transformed or yeah, newly created or and or transformed variables rather than the original variables. So we now refer to the variables that we generated in the data y to long subcommand here. Y is our new uh, variable, then person and time also are in here. Furthermore, um, we have a person defined as a cluster variable for a multi-level analysis. So this defines level one versus level two units. And our time variable is a within um, a person variable because it varies within um, the time or across time points within persons. And then I specified as the analysis type here two level basic so that we could look at some statistics as well for um, this data set. So we can take a look at, for example, um, whether there's any missing data uh, or um, the intra-class correlation coefficient is then provided as well so that we can see how strong the dependencies are um, in the multi-level structure here. Also, I can save my newly created long format data set, which is also nice. So M plus then keeps the old data set white dot dat in as is, so this will stay untouched, but it'll give you a new or additional data set called long dot dat that has the transformation. And so you can check then that everything looks good without changing your old wide format data set. This is simply done by using the save data command and specifying a file name of your choice. So let's take a look at what happens when we run this uh, input file. Input reading terminated normally. You can see we have 12,000, oh, sorry, 1,200 observations. And notice that those are not the persons now. Those are the uh, total number of data points. So the number of persons times the number of time points that are given here because this data set is now in long format. When we scroll down a little bit more, we can see that the number of clusters is 300. And so 300 is the number of persons in this case because the clusters here are the persons. And so four time points times 300 gives you the total number of observations, which is given here, 1,200. So notice that, that this is not the number of individuals, but this is the number of observations or time points times the number of people. So four times 300 in this case. Also, you get a list of the clusters, so the persons, and the different sizes. In this case, we had a totally um, missing data-free 
data set here in this example. So therefore, there's only one cluster size, and that's four. So everybody has four time points. Um, all the persons that from one person number one to person number 300 each and every person provided exactly four measurements. There was no missing data. Nobody was missing a time point. Isn't that fantastic? The reason for that, though, is that it's simulated data, so it's not actual data. In actual data, you would probably find that there are cluster sizes with less than four um, measurement occasions because some people missed some some of the time points. And that's actually not necessarily a problem, especially not for a multi-level model, which can accommodate missing data. So it would include all people, even people who have only one time point. And so it's not necessarily an issue here. In this case, we have complete data. And you can see the average cl cluster size, therefore, is 4.0, exactly 4, because everybody has four time points. And then here you can find the intra-class correlation coefficient for the dependent variable. Um, it's 0.727, so it's extremely strong, extremely, um, as an extremely high intra-class correlation, which here makes sense because the data were simulated as, so say, IQ scores over time, repeated measurements of IQ scores, and we know that IQ scores, intelligence scores, are very stable um, uh, in terms of the correlation stability. So IQ scores tend to be very highly correlated over time. There's not much change in the rank order of individual differences, and so high consistency in IQ scores over time is reflected here in this high intra-class correlation coefficient that shows that there are substantial dependencies in the data because we analyzed the same day, the same people, or we tested the same people over time. Yeah, so this is pretty much uh, what is interesting about this output here, and really what we uh, wanted to see is this data wide to long transformation. So let's take a look at the wide data set one more time. Here we have four columns with our IQ scores, and of course you could analyze the data in this way also with for example, structural equation modeling, a growth curve model, or something like that. But if you wanted to use them in the multi-level framework, then a wide to long transformation is needed. And so let's take a look at the long data set that I already opened here. So this is the newly created version of this data set in long format. And you can see now we have only one column for our IQ score. So all IQ scores from all um, 300 people for all four time points are now in one column. So the first 300 rows in this first column are the first time point, and then below that we have the second time point, third time point, and fourth time point, all stacked into one column. That's why it's called long format, because this data set is now very long rather than wide. It doesn't have four columns anymore, but only three, but it's now much longer. And so this is the first variable, the IQ scores. The second variable you can see is the time variable that for each person actually runs from 0 to 3, not from 1 to 4. So time point 0 would be the first time point, and then 1 would be the second time point, 2 would be the third time point, and 3 would be the fourth time point. And that makes sense because then you have a meaningful 0 point, for example, for your multi-level analysis where 0 indicates the first time point. So that's the way... Um, and plus enumerates the time points. And then the last variable here you can see is the person ID variable. So the first four rows all refer to person number one, where this is um, the first uh, time point for person number one, then the second time point, the third time point, and the fourth time point here for the same person. And then below that is uh, person number two, with uh, time points running from 0 to 3, and so on. So you have all the time points now stacked for each person within each person. And so all the data are the same as before, just organized in a different way, now in long format rather than wide format. And you can now apply, for example, a latent growth curve model as a random coefficient regression model to these data here. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, then please subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit the like button. Also, if you have comments, then please uh, leave one in the comment section. Also, check out the description for additional videos and workshops and I'll see you next time.